Welcome back to Lunatic Astrology. Today we're talking about the super moon, the really close to Earth moon. It's really crazy that it has a scorpion stinger set to strike, some distortion of facts going on with the Neptune conjunct Stellatia, and also three planets in the sky in dignity that bring some goodness to this moon, not to mention a glorious sextile to Saturn, softening things up and bringing some stability or something lasting and positive and full and complete in a way that brings satisfaction to your life and hopefully to the collective as well so get, let's get going and talk about all of that but before we do let's talk about the fact that i am a whole sign hellenistic astrologer using the tropical western zodiac also you may best listen for your rising sign when we do the all signs portion of the video you'll get the most accurate reading from that but you can also check in your sun and moon signs and see how those feel maybe your moon is your emotional set point your sun more about purpose and directionality take a look listen for all of those and you'll get a sense of your story but your rising sign by far will be the most accurate delineation and let's get rolling and check out my description box below for all the things that i have to offer i'm going to be teaching a new course called the professional astrologer for astrologers who want to learn how to get their own business up and running within a month and do well not just survive but thrive as a professional astrologer i'm doing this class because i learned how to do this and it's been really a great journey since 2018 since i began my professional practice getting to where I am and why to share how others can do that too. Alrighty. So let's get going and talk about this moon. This moon is really interesting for me. I'm like pretty yeah, dazzled by it. I'm happy to see a generally healthy sky. Mercury is, I mean, Venus will be in the sign of Taurus or home sign. Mercury will be in the sign of Gemini, his home sign. And we'll also have um, Mars and Aries, his home sign. So there's a highly dignified Therefore, subtle, subtly auspicious sky in which this moon, which is the super moon close to Earth, very big, very bright, is forming. Now, this moon is forming at 23 degrees of Sagittarius, which is an important degree because that is where we had an eclipse in the history of our reality on December the 14th, 2020. And I want you to go back in your life and think about the world in general in 2020, I'm sorry, my mic is coming in and out of reality. I'll have to try to fix that. I know it drove one listener insane. I want you to think about how that back in 2020, December, what was happening in the news cycle? For one, as we all know, we were dealing with the beginning of the pandemic. There was news of a virus escaping in China. We were hearing about it. Don't forget there was a, this was a, um, solar eclipse sitting in Sagittarius, the sign connected to Jupiter and often the word travel. And within that eclipse in a highly activated Sagittarius zone with Jupiter at the time, out of dignity in Capricorn, not able to do much, not able to help the story, not able to mitigate things. We ended up with severe lockdowns and travel restrictions in the six months that followed that eclipse. So I would say that this is the bookend for that eclipse story. I do love that Jupiter is in areas where he's neutrally dignified, but he's with a dignified Mars. And that this event in Jupiter's house Sagittarius of an eclipse sitting at the exact degree, sorry, of a super full moon sitting at the exact degree of the December 14th, 2022 eclipse is full moon, right? Not new moon, closing out the pandemic narrative, at least for the COVID or the Omicron pandemic story. Now there's some energy in the sky for the world that's tense, okay? With this moon in your own life, it'll turn out a lot different. You got that lovely sextile to Saturn and we'll get into that in a minute. And Saturn's dignified on a beautifully positive star called Deneb el Gedi. So I'm really optimistic about this, okay? For individual storylines. However, I wanna talk about uh, deception, distortion of facts and, and, and set to strike. And this could be about the Ukraine, Russia, Putin, Zelensky story, all righty? What could be happening here? Question mark, well. I'm not really pleased that Sagittarius, where the sun sits in order to create a full moon, and the moon is, of course, to cross the way. I mean, where the moon sits in Sagittarius to create the full moon, and of course, the sun is to cross the way in Gemini. I'm not really crazy about the fact that the moon, in its beautiful fullness, is on Shaula, the fixed star that has to do with the stinger in the tail of the scorpion. 
I'm not crazy about it for a lot of reasons. First of all, it represents poison. And in that sense, this is a square to Neptune from the moon. And in fact, it's a T-square because the moon and the sun are opposite, both squaring Neptune and Pisces. And already Neptune and Pisces obfuscates, makes things unclear, deludes, is foggy. It can also represent conspiracy theories and crazy ass stuff, but also, you know, where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> And Pfizer is releasing, for instance, this data, right, on the last batch of data on the vaccines, and maybe something negative will come out of that. But um, Neptune is sitting on Salacia, which brings distortion of facts, sometimes gossip, but it's an asteroid called Salacia. So we're expecting some kind of distortion of truth or distortion of facts that this full moon is culminating on. But because it's culminating and it's bright and it's big and it's super moon, it's going to release us from the distortion of truth and the distortion of facts. It's going to bring full light upon that there may have been and is ongoing some distortion of truth and facts. Now that could apply to the Ukraine situation as well as the pandemic stuff, why? Well, because, or even the monkeypox story if we go with pandemic 2.0, because in the chart of Vladimir Putin, his Mars sits at the exact degree of this eclipse. His son, his Mars is on Shaula. And it's Mars is on Shala in the second house of money and earnings, but also the house of what he puts in his mouth, which is why he's always been terrified of being poisoned, right? He has good reason to with Mars Shala in his second house of food and things he eats. So yeah, he's got a good reason to be concerned about the poison from the stinger of Shala maybe coming into his body. But I don't know that this has anything to do with him being poisoned. But if he gets sick for some reason, I suspect it would be a poisoning to look like an illness. But second of all, you know, his Shala, the stinger set to strike. Okay. I love this book. One of my many star books. This is a little book, book of fixed stars and it's by a lovely lady, Elizabeth Hazel. And just her simplicity of Shala, the delineation is simple, right? Um, it basically is um, the sting or in raised position, ready to strike. And she's breaking down the Arabic words for that. All right, it's an unlucky star. It's in the nakshatra mula, which is the root, which is a nakshatra, which is a, a lunar mansion in the Hindu system. Um, and it's the recycling bin of the galaxy. Woo! <laughs> All righty, so um, there's something about this in the Ukraine story where I get a feeling that this could be very hard. And I believe that the Mars for the Ukraine itself may be also close to this or connected to this, but I'm not gonna do a whole delineation on that. I would just say knowing enough that having Mars being activated by a full energy in the second house of Vladimir Putin cannot be a necessarily good thing when it comes to this war. So one concern would be missile strikes, right? From uh, Russia to Ukraine. And why would that happen? You might ask, why would Russia do that? Like, you know, like inter ballistic missiles going from one country to the other, not, in not war and tanks within the nation. They would do that because the United States just approved giving a bunch of ballistic missiles to Ukraine. And the headline in the news was, but Ukraine promises not to use them to lob missiles across the border at Russia. Like, you got to be kidding me. Like, that was the headline. Ukraine promises. It's like you give a kid um, a dangerous toy and he promises not to play with it. Like you give the five-year-old a BB gun and he goes, I promise not to shoot any squirrels or any windows, mom. So like, it's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Of course, Ukraine's going to try to use them. Of course, they're going to want to lob the missile back at Russia. Well, trust me, it's going to happen. So, or something like that. So I'm thinking of escalation of warfare in this full moon and no it's not happy it's not a good thing and distortion of facts could be the news stories around it not being true maybe the ukraine lobs a missile first and then russia lobs back but the news stories won't disclose that i don't know i'm not a russian apologist as some people have said i'm just reporting the sky stories so this does tell me that definitely there's going to be an es likely escalation in that war but i also think it could be the final escalation and because the moon is about what is coming to a completion, and this is like a really long 100-day uh, incursion of Russia into the Ukraine already. Anything else I want to say about that? Um, 
Jupiter is going over Russia's midheb and is trying to expand Russia, right? And and you know, debalkanize it to add bits of Russia back together. And I can see what's going on with that with Russia. And then this thing that, you know, Putin's not going to give up. Putin's health doesn't look good. There's, there's rumors he has a blood disorder or something or blood cancer. That aside, if he gets ill in the wake of this uh, two Two weeks after this moon also, I would be suspicious of the cause. All right, but I'm also thinking set to strike, poised to strike, maybe his decision that he is going to uh, move aggressively in the Ukraine storyline. All right, let's get going and talk about other thoughts about this moon. Uh, let me show you what it looks like, first of all. So we're gonna go individually pretty soon, right? This, this first part is for you astrology geeks. And by individually, I mean, we're gonna talk about each sign. Oh, it would help if I had the chart ready for you. Give me a sec. So here we have the sky for this beautiful big super moon that as you can see has some positive aspects to it. I wanna correct my record. Uh, yes, we do have Salacia, the asteroid in the story, but she's not sitting on Neptune rather. She's sitting on the sun. No, she's sitting on Jupiter. There's Jupiter here, but Jupiter is the ruler of the Sagittarius full moon and he's on Salacia. So what kind of misinformation, what kind of gossip, what kind of untrue stories are being scooped out into the sky for us to do with this particular moon? Now, <laughs> Anyway, Neptune in a T-square, as I mentioned, that's the illusion delusion factor. He was also squaring this kind of moon back in 2000 and uh, December 14, 2020. Not as tight a square, but he was squaring the moon. So we're back in that pandemic storyline. And lastly, um, the difference then was that Jupiter was in really tough shape in Capricorn, sitting with Pluto, for instance, and, um, and Saturn. And that was really a very, very deregulated, not happy, not able to help. So Jupiter no longer being uh, tied up, you know, in a bad scene is able to support us during something to bring something good out of this particular moon. But, you know, with Jupiter, the god of truth on Salacia, the god of misinformation. This is about misinformation that's going to be un uncovered. Real truth is going to come forward. Jupiter will prevail with bringing forth radical and, and combative Mars truth. I'd also say that Jupiter is courts and legal systems, right? And the full moon is going to be, I do believe, around the time that the United States Supreme Court will release the justice, uh, the Roe versus Wade uh, decision or opinion or whatever uh, that we already had an early notice of, and that could cause huge rifts in the United States at the time, huge upheaval, huge what? Fights Jupiter, a war, Mars, Jupiter justice, right? Fights for justice, protests on the street, agitation for fairness. So trying to like people getting out, you know, and combating what looks like um, to some people, and just a miscarriage of justice that Roe versus Wade might be overturned. And so there's just that, you know, and, you know, there is Hercules in the sky. He's sitting with Neptune. I can't draw him in. He's also about what thing do we need to, like the 12 labors of Hercules, do we have to, have we had to prevail through in order to bring something to completion? Well, if the pandemic isn't the 12 labors of Hercules, I don't know what the hell is, you know? So I think that's pandemic related kind of storyline. But lastly, Denebel Yeti is a beautiful, um, positive, strong star. Uh, of strength and determination sitting on Saturn and Saturn in the moon are in a really nice, really collaborative energy called a sextile, 60 degrees away from each other. It brings flow. It brings harmony. It brings ease. It brings opportunity. You have to take it. It doesn't just show up on your doorstep, but opportunity will knock. You have to answer the door. So in each of our all signs, I'll talk about that opportunity because it's connected to a wedge, like a door stopper. And wedges are kinetic goodness breaking through at the place where Saturn sits. So we'll be talking about that as well. Saturn is going to be the place where we see the outpicturing of this full moon as opportunity and something positive and bringing stability and, uh, and focus to our lives because Saturn does that. Uh, any last things I want to say? Uh, yes, just before the moon, Mercury would have been in a very perfect trine to Pluto, right? He's out of sign here, but he's still an aspectual trine. This energy, which was an, a waning earth trine, is about digging up stuff from underneath the surface to be revealed. Digging up something underneath the surface. Okay. It could be also about the stock markets, Mercury rules markets and mercantile. And a trine to Pluto can be very powerful rejuvenation, maybe temporary in the stock markets. However, it can also be about revealing or digging up or um, 
disclosing something that can either support the stock markets or the markets or be revealing about them. Like, and another thing could be news. Uh, uh, Mercury in the last degrees of, uh, in the couple of few days before this uh, moon could be revealing greater, better numbers for inflation or worse numbers for inflation. Even though it's a trine, it doesn't always mean it's positive. We do have Pluto there. And, you know, honestly, Pluto will tear down and destroy and you know, get rid of what needs to be gone. And he's finishing his Capricorn job during the USA Pluto return. So, you know, if disclosures come out that inflation's over the top and that food shortages are coming, Uranus and Taurus, we have that right now, happened during the Great Depression, happening again, that we could see a real destabilization and a second level, a second tier drop in the stock market. Do not take financial advice from an astrologer. By the way, there's been noting in this uh, that crypto is decoupling from the general markets right now. And that even though the markets go up, crypto doesn't necessarily, some of this could be crypto because Pluto is the god under, under the world and the words mining, right? And so this could be a crypto either rebound or downswing. Of course, if I say both of them, either is meaningless, isn't it? But I'm just saying, I'm not a real astrologer for the trading the markets. Okay, we're going to do the all signs now, and I'm not going to show you the sky as I do because... Um, I don't know. I just, it's not my style anymore to like plod through a, a picture sky with you, but I will cue the sky for me before I start and then we'll go to you. Okay, so I need a little water. <laughs> I just discovered today something that was not making me happy. Okay, and uh, so I'm just trying to be super chill. And as you know, right now I'm recording this on June 2nd. It goes to my Patreon community. You guys will probably see it June 4th or 5th, but you know, we are under the light of Algol in the sense that we had an eclipse there that was activated uh, with the sun on Algol on May 16th. Then the Johnny Depp trial happened with Johnny and Amber having their Venus on Algol and now Mercury stationed to go direct on Algol on June the 4th. This is all third, fourth. This is all a kind of Algol time off with their heads, you know, demonizing each other. And I cannot count the things that are going on right now where I'm trolled and demonized, but also a fellow astrologer of mine's having the same experience. People People are losing their heads right now. <laughs> You'll probably be listening to this on the fourth, for instance, when Mercury is like turning around right on algal, the Medusa's head. <laughs> Alrighty, check out my Amber Heard and Johnny Depp, why Johnny Depp will win video posted two days before the trial. It kind of went mini viral, but it's not, it's also not just about yay and right. It's about looking at the reasons that relationship was so toxic and he's, and looking at ease and re easy reasons why you can come, you could have called Johnny the winner, winner in this trial, which he was. So basically, um, if you want to learn astrology, you want to watch that video. Okay, let's get rolling and talk about uh, Aries first. Now I am, this is time stamped, guys. So there's something called chapter. Someone complained that, it, that I didn't have stamps or anything. I do. All you have to do is click on the headline of the video. And then you'll go, you'll see these things called chapters. And you can also notice that I always time put timestamps in the pin comments in the description box. Yeah, people have been really gnarly lately. It's like crazy. I was trolled by this woman on the comment section of YouTube. I was, eh, do not engage. Do not engage with people who demonize you. Do not demonize other people. Keep your cooler head. Do not lose your head, especially over the next few days. Well, into about June the 6th. Okay. So let's go ahead. Aries, you sun, moon, and rising. I have an Aries, FYI, <laughs> I tell you guys everything. I'm an Aries, sun, moon, Mercury, and Athena. So I'm very Aries, as you might guess. And we're experiencing the full energy of this moon, brightly shining, gloriously close to earth at nine de at 20 degrees <laughs> on June 14th of Aries in our ninth house. Now, if there is something in your world to do with having wanted to go on to a journey to a foreign land, resolve a court issue or a legal issue, get that book published, written, or agented, or even find your deeper spiritual truths. This is a full moon lighting up that part of your sky, reminding you though, that it is ruled by Jupiter, who is against that asteroid, Salacia, distortion of facts, Jupiter, God of truth, the moon on the stinger, maybe some stingy, truth will come out from some person in a foreign land bringing news bearing news revealing something to you some buddy in an academic setting somebody in a publishing setting somebody in a spiritual or temple or religious setting in your life this may sting a bit 
this not may not be the easiest to fall out in the two weeks that follow this moon. However, for the most part, because Jupiter is in good dignity and he's hanging out with a dignified Mars, I'm not too worried. I do think for some of you, it just could really look like an opportunity to take a trip to a foreign land or the revealing of stuff that allows visas or passports to be more uh, apt to work for you or to be able to, you know, use them. Okay. So whatever that means to you, applying for a visa, a travel permit, things like that. Um, also, we have as Aries folk, uh, the ruler of this particular moon um, sitting in that airy zone with a very combative Mars in our first house. It's very possible. We have to be careful to bite our tongue because we may find that we are going to be more aggressive or even physically aggressive than normal in the two weeks that follow this moon. The upside of this energy, Jupiter, Mars in our first house is we are taking bold, magnanimous, generous, courageous, expansive, leaderful action in our own lives. We're on our game and thank God because we've got Mars here, plus his soul, ruler of our ascendant. We've got him here until July 5th. Don't squander this energy. You get it every two years only. And it's time for you to be active, physically active, take action, be commanding, find your groove you know so that quality of the sky uh with this moon for you aries in particular feels very benevolent saturn in a sextile all right from your 11th house of friends and allies and benefactors and people who want to be patrons for you help you give you a leg up even your fairy godmother lives here, is very positive. Saturn would say, what authority, elder, esteemed one that you might respect. It could be a boss. It could be a colleague who's above you. It could be somebody in your social networking groups and stuff online or in real life who wants to favor you regarding things to do with ninth house features. Now, ninth house is teaching, you know, I'm teaching a sky reader uh, six week astrology course. We're just going into week two. I'm loving the crew of students who signed up 40 students. And, you know, it's really about what we want to also share with the world from our more, our pulpit as an Aries, the ninth house, what full light are we shining in our house of how we want to guide or mentor or teach or, you know, you know, instruct, not instruct necessarily, but more of that academic vibe, you know, to really uh, bring knowledge to others. And so full moon here is shining a light in that part of our sky as well. And, um, it, it, you know, with the support from Saturn, we may be establishing something that has legs to stand on, a legacy offering. So maybe my sky reader course, I thought I'd do it only once, is a legacy offering. Maybe it's my the professional astrologer course, which is really something I'm excited to teach. You know, it's really going to help you stand out from the crowd if you're an astrologer wanting to learn how to do simple branding and super simple techniques to get your business up and running from square one with your booking calendar and all of that. So I'm really excited about that too. So we'll see which of my projects as an Aries is taking off but something is taking off and especially remember that the sun guys in the areas the sun is in the third house and this is the online world this is writing this is selling and this is marketing energy as well so there's a lot of juice down on the bottom of the sky where the sun is also sitting all right and mercury's accompanying that sun right mercury's sitting in um Sagitt in home signs it's the home sign of gemini where the sun opposite the moon is then the moon is reflecting that exciting third house light into the ninth okay we're moving on because i tend to go too long on my own sign somebody said that and i think you're right not always defensive am i <laughs> taurus sun moon and rising sign now hey guys i need to make sure i'm looking at you i can't tell if i am anymore because i need i deviated into the back end of my software <laughs> all right i'm gonna move you guys a bit hang on all right so let's keep moving and talk next about uh, Taurian folk. Uh, so Taurus, you're having the energy of this moon shining very brightly and very close to Earth. Rem I remind you to go back to December 14th, 2020. This is happening uh, in your natal eighth house. What was going on in your life uh, December of 2020? 20 at six months because this is playing out again it's eighth house money stories for the most part it's about financial things bank loans other people's money spousal money business partner money tax rebates how you can get your hand on credit card monies how you can get your hand 
and gain and leverage other people's money. A full moon is showing you something that either you're completing something, you're for, there's a fruiting here, you're going to be able to sign documents or get things to work. Things are moving forward for you, Taurus. You're able to say, yes, I accomplished this fullness of a project. It is done. Okay, I do know a Taurus who's going to be signing a big mortgage re, um, what do you call it, re, when you do, anyway, there's a word for it all around the 10th of June, and this is going to be connected to that moon for him as well. So it's very practical advice to tell, tell you if you're still working on some kind of financing issue, a bank loan, a mortgage or whatever, and it could really pull through for you in a full moon, uh, but watch for a few things. So well, let's talk about the good stuff. Um, also, the moon in the eighth house could be bringing you into occult mysteries and magic, tarot card readings and, and psychic stuff and paranormal realms. You might be delving deeper there and feeling very intuitive during this time as well. But with a sextile from Saturn, let's talk positive first. In your 10th house, whatever this money story is about, this positive, it's going to open up powerful energies in your career, allow, allow you to establish more authority in your career or your career and your, your money are connected in a positive way or your purpose or what the world sees you doing, okay? And yes, there is the stinger Shaula here, but Shaula is also a star of power. So, you know, if you've been stung in the money story and it has hurt, I think Saturn is helping to stabilize the stinging in the financial, financial part of your life and bring some stability. Now, because we have Jupiter as the Lord of this, the God of truth and knowledge and courts and legal agreements, by the way, um, this is to me uh, positive. He's also rectifying perhaps truth bearing Jupiter on top of salacia, the misinformation and gossip energy, he's, he's healing that. What kind of maybe ill re rep reputation, people whispering behind your back from the 12th house where Jupiter sits, telling bad stories that aren't true about you, Taurus, are being healed by Jupiter bearing truth over salacia, only a minor asteroid really, uh, with this distortion of facts. Yes, misinformation. <laughs> anyway, what else can I tell you? Um, if you have had secrets that you've been keeping from the world, a full moon can, can out you. But if other people have been keeping secrets from you, that can also out them. So you can be looking for some sting out as some uh, secret that was withheld from you is brought to light. You know, Scorpio, um, which Mars rules is in your, um, I'm bringing that up because, um, Shala is connected to the stinger, which is in Scorpio in sidereal astrology. So it could be a business partner or a relationship partner reveals something that kind of stings. But I think the ultimate goodness is that it's giving you more stability and more power because of that sex off from Saturn for some of you to know the truth. And, uh, you know, Mercury will have been busy trying to uncover or dig up any kind of hidden things anyway um, in the week before this moon. So we shall see what that looks like. For the most part, it looks like a positive, stabilizing money and career moon for you. And I, I feel hopeful for you about this. Not, not, not hopeful, but very hopeful. I forgot to say that every full moon is always connected to about six months earlier. I was talking about the eclipse, okay, when there would have been a new moon in Sagittarius. And it might help to go back to that new moon. Let me grab the date of that new moon, which I wasn't focused on because I was hyper-focused on the eclipse at that degree. Okay, it was December the 4th. So there was a Sagittarius new moon, December 4th, 21. Then in a way you may be culminating and completing something that you began in December of 21. Moving to the next sign. Oh, before I do, sorry about that. I would add to that with that Neptune square in your 11th house, if any social group, friendship circle or seeming ally has been uh, giving you a really hard time on Neptune and Hercules that could come to a close and you may be able to see that person really clearly and not through rose colored glasses. This could also just be about seeing really clearly uh, the true nature of someone you thought was a friend but may not be your friend all right because it's a house of friendships or you may become disillusioned with a social group or a group that you belong to. Okay, so moving to Gemini, sun, moon, rising sign, you, dot, you guys have the full moon in the house of marriage and business partners. This is the house of significant others in your life, sometimes legal contracts and, agree, and, and arrangements and agreements we make, the old handshake, you know? 
Now, in this part of your sky, um, you can go back to December 4th and say, what were you inciting as a new beginning in 2021, December, that it could have been playing out uh, since those six months have passed that you want to bring fullness to the seventh. The seventh is the marketplace for your career path, uh, Gemini. So it's also where you sell your goods and you bring your stuff to the market. So possibly you may also be sharing a full light, some product, some project, something you've been creating in your career path, especially because Neptune is in your 10th squaring this moon. However, you may have some trouble with it, but there is a square and you may be disenchanted, disillusioned or something about, or foggy or unsure about something. But I do like that about your, something in your career, not reflecting properly as you would have liked in your client audience marketplace zone of influence. But I do think with the, the, the gentle love from Saturn in your ninth house of truth and wisdom, and higher forces of good and your dharma that whatever this moon is trying to accomplish gemini it's bringing some kind of stability to something that you have wanted to share either or see or know or understand either about how you're supposed to interact from your career story into your audience story or with the one you're with particularly a marriage partner stinger shala poised to strike full moon in the marriage house for some Gemini's could be an, a little bit of an ouchy time in the two weeks that follow this particular moon regarding things that are happening in your primary marriage or business partnership. You've had Mercury digging up the goods for a week before this moon uh, in, mon in a money and secrets part of the chart. So especially with hidden money, your partner's hiding money from you, your business partner's hiding money from you. There's money that you're supposed to be getting, but no one's telling you it's, it's yours, you know, the inheritance, for example. So you may be getting reveals around that as this full light shines as well. Next, I will say to you that, you know, with Jupiter and Mars in your 11th house, so you may be having some difficulty with friends right now and allies who are not acting that way. There's a lot of combat, mortal combat going on there with a very... Uh, intense fighter energy, Mars and Aries and Jupiter blowing that fighting energy up for the last couple of weeks. Hopefully it's cooling down now that Mars is moving further away from Jupiter. Um, Jupiter wants to bring truth to every situation. He's on the asteroid for the distortion of facts, Salacia. So what, how, what is true and not distorted, this being revealed through the light of a moon through either a business partner a client or your marriage partner, possibly. Oh, those are all possible themes. Um, and this distortion of fact is no longer there. You know, you are now in clear waters, I think, where you can no longer pretend that you don't know the truth or the truth is setting you free or the truth is right in your face about a business partner, marriage partner, or client situation, perhaps, okay? This is positive, I remind you, because there's a wedge with Saturn, and Saturn is the kinetic release point for this full moon. So it, it releases itself with some established authority energy in courts, legal situations, higher education, book publishing, or foreign shores and travel visas and foreign lands, things to do with the ninth house. <laughs> Cancer, sun, moon, and rising, you have a full moon in so close to earth in your sixth house of the work you're here to do your job your service your servitude hopefully not your slavery i always say the sixth house is like when your duty becomes destiny and when your servitude becomes service so it can be a workhouse though employees colleagues the work environment and it's also the house of your health pro protocols and routines because it is the house of sickness so a full moon here could shed light on a health challenge you've been having cancer and bring you perhaps a resolution because Saturn is in a beautiful flowing sextile, but giving you opportunity to reveal that which is hidden from the eighth house in regards to what is really happening with that health challenge and maybe resolve it. And you could also find that Saturn in the eighth house can give you access to funds that you could improve your work environment, your colleague environment, your coworker space, um, you could also find that you can secure loans or money to create new office space or, or health protocols or momentum for your health. Like what? Like, you know, you want, you, you need to get a device for your health and you could secure the money because Saturn's here to help. Um, you can also look at the shallow stinger as what 
is poised to strike in the two weeks that follow this moon. Now, you know, yes, the stinger of a scorpion is poisonous. Let's not pretend that it's all easy, but I can't get away from Saturn sextiling that moon and that star at the same time. And he's on Deneb El Gadi, a very powerful, very positive star. So maybe the poison is not necessarily being dispensed for you if it's a health challenge, but being removed. You know, what is there in your environment or in your lifestyle that is toxic to your being, to your health and your wellness? And Saturn may give you the strength and courage to undo it. And in the eighth house, see a hypnotherapist, see a tarot reader, see a woo healer of a great authority that could really support you. This is definitely possible with that Saturn in the eighth sextile in the moon in the sixth, for sure. You've got that tension with Neptune up in the ninth house, foreign lands, foreign chores, travel, your true dharma, your purpose in life, your spiritual and religious beliefs, you know, what you think life is made of, the meaning of life. You're all fogged up up there, you know, deluded, confused, not sure what your spiritual philosophy is. And now we've got this, you know, 12 labors of Hercules to find the truth and what you really believe in life. So you may be coming into a spiritual turning point where all those labors are resulting in something positive, but through the grit of discontent, through this tension around things there. Now, you do have Jupiter uh, on Salacia, bringing uh, truth to where Salacia would bring misinformation or discord around truth. And I think, of course, Jupiter will prevail because he's a god and she's an asteroid, just saying. And so what is there going on about you having more authority and power, being more god of Mount Olympus in your career zone, Cancer, but also, getting any distortion of facts out of the way so that your reputation precedes you in a positive way or that your career authentic power, Jupiter, Mars in your 10th house, taking steps and directions and momentum and passion in your career in an authentic and powerful way is supported by this moon because Jupiter is the ruler of the moon. It's very much a work career essence for you in this part of the sky to move forward without distorted facts with true knowledge and information in a way that supports a thrival in your career reputation house. I hear the words heal or heal thyself, especially if you have any health challenges, you need to get those all tidied up so that you have all the momentum and power you need to be a kick-ass something in your career path. And Jupiter is probably bringing you teachers and guides right now that are helping you in your career to move yourself in the right direction and classes and courses you take as well. All right, let's keep going. Um, like I'm already fidgety today, guys. I'm so fidgety. All right, so moving on to... Leo, sun, moon, and rising signs. So the Leo people, you guys are having the energy of the full moon shining in your third house. This, I mean, in your fifth house of love and romance, of children, of play and sexuality and pleasure, inspiration, creativity, the arts and the muse, the joy spark. Now, the moon is going to show you what may have begun as early as December 4th, where you planted seeds for greater joy, fun, creativity, maybe your own independent business enterprise as well, Leo, because that's what the fifth house is. Be careful for pregnancy, of course, full moon there could be disclosing pregnancy exists or bringing one on if you're not cautious, if you don't want a baby, because Jupiter rules this moon and he's the great sperminator. Jupiter is also how, helping you to undo uh, distorted information that may have been uh, given to you from people in spiritual authority or father or father figures, ninth house in Vedic astrology. Um, that is now going to be clearing even legal matters that have been distorted for you, clearing the way for clarity and forward momentum and movement. Um, if you want to go back to school, if you want to get, get a job uh, in a foreign land, if you want to travel to a foreign land, things are clearing up with this full moon to bring you a pleasurable, uh, enjoyable yay on all of those counts. If you have children, <laughs> your, one of your children could disclose something, full moon, right? And it's going to be a resolving of distortion of fact, confessing the truth, says a child, mom, I really did this. And let me tell you all about it. Um, anything else? You know, Saturn is lending a lot of love from your seventh house, right? He's like juicing it up saying, I'm bringing some, some flow, opportunity, ease and grace over here from your husband, from your business partners or from your clients or from your marketplace. And I want to support you uh, to find, you know, an, um, a more of this blooming of joy and, and more of this blossoming of vitality. And then really uh, finding the groove of, of play again in your life. Um, 
Anything else? We do have the energy of Mars, so in that ninth house. So if you have a court battle you need to win at or a legal affair you need to prevail in, this is super ideal for you, Leos, to win the day in legal and court things. But also, of course, travel to foreign land. Mars loves to travel, and Jupiter is the god of travel and adventures as well, and they're in your house of foreign lands. So in the two weeks that follow this moon, you may be able to plan or plot a trip away somewhere. It could be really re rejuvenating for you because the moon is bringing you more vitality. The stinger part of it, well, yeah, maybe your child reveals that, that they lied and it stings to hear the truth, right? Ouch. <laughs> um, what else can I say about that? Not much. Um, there is a potential for some sting from a lover, a beloved, a, a sex partner, and someone you're dating or a child in the two weeks that follow the moon. With a square to Neptune, it's breaking through perhaps some kind of uh, fog of rose-colored glasses that you've been wearing about that relationship. But it's for your best good, because <laughs> Saturn says so. All right, Virgo, Sun, Moon, and Rising. You know, you guys are having the full moon in the in the house of your home, your real estate, the land you live on, your ancestral line, your mother even. Um, I find that the full moon here can bring a real fullness to the home as a general principle. And you may be feeling then that so something here is like coming to fullness that began in December. Maybe it has to do with the uh, energies of... Um, wanting to change your home, wanting to re rearrange your home or something like that. Because right now in the sky, Jupiter, Mars bring on that energy. Mars is like the guy who carpenter moves things around and he's in his home sign of, of Aries with Jupiter, Jupiter, the ruler of the moon. But also there's money to be had here for you, Virgos. You're coming into some financial abundance between like this reading today, actually, and all the way through to October 28th, because Jupiter is in your eighth house. That comes back for the first five months of 23 as well. This is typically a bequeathment or inheritance transit, but it can also look like getting windfalls from things like big giant tax rebates um, or uh, big, uh, more, uh, or getting jumbo keener loans or mortgages or things that really accentuate financial abundance by using other people's money. So Jupiter is placed here and during this moon, he rules the full moon in your fourth house. And so the fourth house is legacy and ancestral line. So legacy wealth, is there money from a, 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 a a legacy thing, a parent, a grandparent, a great aunt or something that could be coming through your family system for you. And in the two weeks that follow this moon, you may have the knowledge or discovery of that. Um, there is some sting here. Of course, Jupiter is on shallow the stinger and like say great aunt Susie passes or great grandpa Joe, Joe passes. You may love that person. It may sting a bit for you Virgos. Okay. Or this is the house of the mom. Um, it, you know, technically a full moon here in a nice, um, sextile to Saturn, it does not make me think that it's likely actually a maternal passing, but maybe if the mom is elderly, right? Because Saturn represents the elder years, like your 90 year old frail mother in some kind of, you know, care setting and she's ready to go. This could be for you, for those people with really elder moms, this could be a sign that the two weeks that follow Virgo, your mom could leave this planet, you know, and it's her time to go. Um, anything else? This um, would not be a surprise to you, though. This is a very soft, gentle Venusian sextile to the moon. Um, anything else I want to let you know about? Yeah, um, that energy of salacia, you know, with the misinformation on Jupiter or the distortion of facts, you might have to watch for someone trying to hide money from you that belongs to you. And Jupiter comes along and says, oh, no, it belongs to you. Or, oh, no, let me resolve that financial confusion. I mean, it could be if you're separated from a spouse, even it could be like, oh, you're entitled to this money. Didn't you know that? Did they tell you otherwise? It could be some kind of correction of some miscommunication record around money stuff for you. All right. As it as something breaks through fi through financially for you here. Um, and, you know, Mercury has been talking to Pluto, digging up some kind of information from the bowels of reality for you for a, a week or so before this. And it's coming out of the house of the father in Vedic astrology, the ninth house, but also out of the house of truth itself. So what kind of truth is Mercury wanting to reveal about hidden, hidden stories that you could really benefit from financially? Hmm. Lastly, you know, the fourth house is also a very uh, 
inward place you know it connects to the darkest part of the night and there's a full light in the darkest part of the night a full moon in the darkest part of the the sky uh in your natal chart so what is there beneath the surface of the view that you may have buried from your own view what is like underneath the the essence of you or your family system that is going to be uncovered for you so that you can live long and prosper <laughs> so that you can find something positive in the sky for you <clears throat> I mean, especially regarding, you know, support from that money house is a bit of a buried treasure reveal for you. Okay. Inner treasure or outer treasure. Libra sun, moon and rising the full moon and Sagittarius on the 14th is shining brightly in your third house. You want to think about your siblings, your aunts, uncles, cousins, and all the extended family, your local neighborhood, short trips and travel. Um, yeah. Trains, planes, and automobiles, um, things to do with writing, communicating, sometimes marketing and selling and your local neighborhood. So all that stuff is lit the hell up and it's and it may have been seeded it may have been seeded in december of 2021 and now it's fruiting coming to fullness and it's coming into enlivenment uh, we do have shala there could a sibling sting you could a relative give you some kind of ouchy moment um possibly and would it be about disclosure of some truth it was hidden from view because jupiter on salacia suggests the possibility jupiter and salacia energy is happening in your seventh house of business partnerships and marriage partnerships um so also another way to read it will a partner on a trip tell you something true business or love partner that stings possibly um, your audience and your clients are your seventh, your third house can be your, your website, your online social media platforms. Could you have a row or a difficulty with one person in those places who tells you something that is correcting a record that dispenses a misinformation or distorted information? And does it really sting a bit to hear that? Now, if it does, there's good news. Saturn is sextiling this moon, bringing some kind of foundation of goodness to what could also be a bit of an ouch to you. And Saturn is doing that from your creative house of the muse, your inspiration, your independent business, your fun, your play, your pleasure, your, your romance, okay? So whatever this information is, it could be discovered may, also relieve you of some misinformation that has been holding you back from establishing a foundation rooted in inspiration and play and enthusiasm following your bliss basically could even be one of those last straw moments right <laughs> you're not too sure you even like your clients and finally one of them does something and you're like dudes i'm out of here i'm gonna go and join the circus or something <laughs> I mean, Libras, you definitely have the quality about you of balancing everything out on a pro con list before you make a decision, but this could be more radical and rapid decisions around things to do with uh, your joy factor. And I don't know if there's anything else I want to tell you here. That's about it. Um, I hope I didn't give you a short shrift, but I can't think of anything else to dig up. I mean, Mercury was having a powwow with Pluto from uh, trying from four to eight uh, in the week and a half before the moon. And that can mean something like what financial hidden things under the surface, uh, you know, or secrets are being revealed because Pluto is and Mercury are digging them up from underneath the earth. That would be occurring in about the week before this moon and the moon could bring it to a head in some way. All right, like a big, big pimple of out uh, popping truth. Okay, I'm going to get more water and continue. Give me a sec. I am rotted by green water. Okay, I just guzzled some more water and I'm back. Let's go ahead and talk about Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising people. So um, this isn't a more, more important for you maybe than anyone else because you're Scorpio rising and the stinger of the scorpion is a part of your mythology, right? Ouch, you know, boom. And so consider that as I go forward. The full moon is shining very brightly you know, very beautifully <laughs> and all of that good stuff um, in the sky. And it is in your natal second house. Now for you, this could very well open up something to do with your finances. You may be dealing with a question mark about your money. 
and it's not just the money that you get in your paycheck, although normally it is, okay? So Scorpio, rising sun and moon, it's often, you know, the money you make, but it's possessions as well, like your car, you know, your antique rugs, your, I don't know, what things do you possess in your life? It's your self-worth, self-value. So there's a lot of stuff in that part of the sky right now that is getting a big spotlight on it for you, but there's a stinger there. So why would it sting, you know? Because Salacia and Jupiter are powwowing, and Jupiter is the lord of the moon in your sixth house. And Mars is there, some combative energy. So it's in the workplace. It's in the collegiate space. It's your coworker space, Scorpios. And maybe you're going to hear something like maybe there was some misinformation or lack of truth or lack of, yeah, lack of real facts. And now they're going to be cleared up, but it still may be a bit stingy for some reason. Set poised to strike. But poised to strike in your money house with Jupiter in your sixth house and Saturn in a sextile blessing this thing from the fourth house could actually turn out to be a very positive maneuver regarding money and work. And it's something you may do from your home or in your home or money and work possessions and home things are connected to some sort of positive financial development. So for example, Saturn here could be stalling the sale of a home or the move to a new home or something good happening in your home. But now he's loving up this full moon and go back to December 4th, what was going on regarding maybe money and home. And now he's lending a edge of authority and Saturnian stability and positive yay to the moon in the money house. Now, it could be anything. It could be refinancing your mortgage, getting the money you need, getting a buyer for your property that's the perfect buyer, stabilizing your, your, your home life or something, but also your money as well. Mars is going to war in your sixth house of health issues. So this is going to make you more physically active. If you listen to him, time for your Tai Chi, your Qigong, or you're running again. Um, he will also help you move in positive directions to improve your health. He has his joy here. Ideal time for surgery if you need it. In the meantime, with Jupiter lording over the, or with Jupiter there as he lords over his house of Aries, which will be there till July 3rd. This is an ideal time for you to get a raise or a promotion if you take action, okay? Um, because Jupiter would be a beneficent energy like the boss looking over you and saying yes or liking you or maybe just a good opportunities and lucky breaks in this work environment. But right now you have to you know, use that Mars. He's the Lord of your chart to take deliberate, focused, passionate, daring bold action to get your promotion raise or extra goodies in your workhouse which will positively impact your money house <laughs> mm -hmm. and anything else i want to say uh well we did have a mercury digging up secrets potentially anyway uh as you travel through your seventh house just before this moon and talk to pluto in your third so what kind of uh, information is coming through business partners or your marriage partner connected to third house things, trips, travel, or the local neighborhood that is also maybe showing up more visibly in the sky around this moon in the couple of weeks that follow. Anything else to tell you? The square to, to Neptune in the children and romance and pleasure and play and sexuality house can be a challenge there's the 12 labors of hercules in your <laughs> with your neptune right now and you may have been going through a time scorpio rising where you've been really unsure or foggy about children having children your kids are confusing or deluding you you can't see them clearly your love life has been filled with rose colored glasses and you haven't really seen your partner correctly those kinds of themes but now the kind of 12 labors of Hercules is a victory story. So victorious in your romance, but through this gritty tension of a T-square. All right, as well. I mean, Neptune here, if you have your own business, he rules music. He rules photography and uh, filmmaking and storytelling. Could you have some gritty C-square to give you a breakthrough? Because T-squares can give breakthroughs regarding some creative project that you may be doing in your life, Scorpios. Hmm? Think about that. Um, Stephen King, prolific horror writer, has Neptune in, fantastical Neptune in his fifth house. The house of the Muse. You might be going to battle with your muse in the two weeks that follow the moon. 
Um, Sagittarius sun, moon and rising sign. The full moon is shining brightly and close to earth on the 14th of the month in your first house of your body and you and your identity and your personhood and how you perceive yourself and others as well. This is the character you're playing. And you might find that you're in the spotlight. There's a full moon on you. Um, so what ways are you shining more brightly and people are taking note of you with the stinger here, you've got the stinger and you're not being stung. I don't think so. I think you are, you've got the Scorpio's tail on this moon. Go back to what was happening for you around December 4th. What, were, what seeds were you planting in the house of yourself, your body, your health, your identity, and how would it be coming to fullness now if you can make sense of that you may want to go back to the eclipse as well of december um 2000 and for december 14 2020 that happened in the house of you what what was happening with your health with your identity what big shifts were what seismic shifts in you were happening as you let go of an old identity at that time it was a self node eclipse cycle to imbibe and own a new one and now how is it like reverbing through your sky from so that eclipse of december 2014 would unfold for at least six months and it was a part of a longer year and a half eclipse cycle of you divesting of one identity to take on something new so in what ways is this echoing and redolent of that i mean i know a sag who had a divorce during that time right during that eclipse cycle in back in december of 20 2020 and why would that be coming back to you now for instance for anyone like what major life themes especially because the it was self and other eclipses my partner my my marriage partner me my business partner me anyway so this is replaying a bit here um with shala stinging a little bit but also you could be stinging others uh, like you could sting your marriage partner you could sting your business partner okay that's what i'm saying in the next couple of weeks after this moon um but because there's this Jupiter sitting with Salacia, she's this distortion of facts and Jupiter is the God of truth. Then you're going to find that what is coming up is from the house of romantic love. So has your partner been unfaithful and is now telling you, is your child not telling you the truth and you now discover it? Is the person you just started dating being revealed to be untruthful and you now see that these are stories for you sagittarius that are very likely to occur if you are an artist or creative type this is also about the muse right but what kind of correction mechanism around distortion of truth is happening regarding your own creativity that's a little harder to parse um you do have neptune at the tip of a t-square in your fourth house what has been foggy and unseeable and hard to pin down in your home life? And how is this bringing this to a, a pivotal moment? Okay. Saturn is lending support from the third house of your siblings, your aunts, uncles, and cousins to the full moon in the house of you. Also the local neighborhood, also trips and travel. Quit a journey or a trip somewhere, be dis, uh, disclosing of some you know power to be stable in the face of some difficult stingy things and secrets revealed or truths that are told saturn in your third house can also represent um an elder sibling an elder local friend or a friend a friend local friendship or local community group uh that you've had established already that's supporting you during this journey in some way through a bit of tension in the love and relationship quarter of your chart there's no doubt about it sages and if you're single uh, this is not necessarily a good time for a new relationship with this full moon in the house of you opposite the sun in the house of relationship in a t-square to neptune you meet somebody now, you're not going to know who they really are. You can't see them clearly. Uh, take a deep breath, pause, and see what you feel about them as time passes. Just a suggestion. Because Mercury was digging up secrets, right, to do with money. And as he, this moon occurs, he moves into the seventh house of your marriage partner. What financial secrets were kept from you that a marriage or love partner or business partner is now disclosing, Sag? That's part of this moon for sure. Or financial truths. I don't know. Something like that. Okay, we're going to move on. And we're going to move into uh, Capricorn, Sun, Moon, and Rising People. And it... <laughs> And my feeling uh, for you guys is that this is going to be, um, the, well, I know what it is. It's a full moon in your uh, natal 12th house, but it's going to be very spiritual and very 
powerful for you at a deep, deep level. This is a very between the worlds metacosmos house it has to do with your inner life your spiritual life your spiritual liberation even your dreams at night can be involved with this especially with a t-squared in neptune what intense revealing full light is being shined through the realm of your inner life your trance journeys your imagination from neptune and this t-square energy could work in your behalf because it's all very metacosmos energy the sun is in your uh, sixth house your moon is in your 12th and the metacosmos realm of the third is activated seeing a hypnotist a, a, a psychic a reader of some kind can be prescribed or or may occur during this time or we're going for a hypnosis session as well to reveal something deep within yourself the way you do not serve your life by doing sabotaging actions we have habits behaviors and addictions is up for grabs neptune is a god of addiction and the 12th house involves addictions as well all our addictions are not substance addictions capricorn sometimes they're ideas addicted to an idea uh, under the spell or illusion of a belief and some of this is breaking up like ice that's been stuck for a long time or you know whatever condensed stock energy is waking up here for you and unsticking and with jupiter sitting with salacia as lord of the spoon in the fourth house this can be very deep for you it could be like what's going on in your home and private life that is going to be very uh correct the record and very revealing but also deep within that ancestral line of you in terms of the ancestors behind you what is breaking free so that you can move forward without carrying baggage that doesn't belong to you because you are no longer receiving distorted facts but knowing the truth of who you are in relationship to your family of origin childhood messages and the ancestral line this is also the house of the mother and moon in the 12th could mean your mom is in the hospital or quite ill and jupiter and mars could be trying to bring something to your attention regarding your relationship to your mom just for some of you your mom could pass this is jupiter moving through the forest can bring legacy wealth to you in the next year and a half or until may sometime until may of 23 but yeah in this moon there's a very critical thing a juncture around the mother's story it could be coming up if your mom's ill she may tell you a story about her life or childhood that you didn't know right? Distortion of facts, Jupiter corrects the record. Um, I would say that Mercury is big, busy digging up some dirt, <laughs> as he's prone to do as he was trining Neptune in the week before the um, Jupiter, Pluto in the week before this moon. And the dirt that he might have dug up is about things that are about yourself. So this again, this is your, your own revealing revelatory story about you and your sexuality, you and you and your play, pleasure, joy, you and your romantic proclivities. Okay. These are possibilities. You and your reckless gambling habit. I don't know. Things like that. For the most part, with with a support though, a lot of support from Saturn sextiling in your second, your self worth, your self possession, your values are changing, and your financial situation does improve as a result of what looks like a lot of self discovery and a lot of inner work that follows the two weeks that follow this moon. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Rising. That's me. Hallelujah. Well, we are experiencing this moon in our 11th house of good spirit. It's a good space for us. It's where we receive our friends who want to help us, our allies, and people who want to be benefit, benefit us in some way. It's also where we can have fame. It's where we can experience great um, boat, bouts of celebrity, micro celebrity. Uh, it's also where we can feel great financial gain, reaping the rewards of our career in both our reputation, our stature, and our gain financially. In this type part of the sky, which I always call my fairy godmother part of the sky or father, it depends on my mood. Um, and you've got a, you know an energy of an eclipse repeat. Go back, go back to when you had an eclipse in December of 2014 and the six months that followed, what kind of great gains did you experience from your career? I'm going to use me as an example. I launched my do what you love with the magic you're born for a coaching program, which I did two cohorts in 2020. And it was very, very financially satisfying. However, Jupiter was in Capricorn muting the set, the satisfaction. So this is a different story. This is like 2.0. What career things can bring you great gains and expansion that now Jupiter can support because he's no longer debilitated. In fact, he's in a beautiful placement of, uh, you know, 
a, a neutral in Aries, but trining this air, trining this moon. He's on Salacia. He'll bring truth to what was distorted. What distortion of information has come from your third house? Maybe siblings, aunts, uncles, and cousins, local neighborhood, or even the online social media world that is now bring, bring, being brought to great clarity and um, truth. You may be learning something new right now because Jupiter tends to do that in your third house. I'm in a three or four month really intense coaching program around a new way to scale my business online. And I'd say that, you know, this is also connected to how the fruit of that can show up. If you go back to December as well, the fourth, you planted seeds in your life for your career satisfaction and great gains that are now coming to fruition. What things were you planting in December? For me, I planted the seeds of the professional astrologer course and I was building the website then. So maybe this is coming to fullness because if you check my description box and you're wanting to launch your own astrology business, believe me, I know how to do it. <laughs> and I'm only gonna take you through exactly the steps I took to who make six figures in my first year of being a professional full-time astrologer. But not to tout my horn, that's not what I'm here for. I'm trying to give you examples, Aquarius, of how this works. Neptune is in a T-square, which is gritty, uh, in your second house of earnings. Now, Neptune's been putting you through the paces, right? Since 2011, all of us Aquarius is to spiritualize our, our, and our values, to bring unconditional love and higher level uh, wisdom and spiritual truth to our the way we generate money and resources in our life. And it's confusing and very hard to do to bring a, a union between the spiritual, the transcendent and the, and the deeply true and the mundane and the, the profane and the everyday world of making money. And for every Aquarius, we've been going through this journey since 2011. And now it's really in our face, right? Is the thing we're offering or doing in a complete alignment? Is it with our spiritual values? Do we feel it's in the place that Neptune would ask us to honor? Neptune also is storytelling, film writing, music. Are parts of us wanting to enliven that in our lives? I am, I'm getting back to writing fiction. Um, but there's gritty tension in the full moon time around this. And, you know, Neptune is on the 12 labors of Hercules asteroid. So, you know, the story is good at the end of the 12 labors, you know, Hercules got divinity, immortality. So we're coming to some culminating labors in our finances that we could have some really gritty tension yet feel a sense of Finally, we've arrived. <laughs> Finally, we got to the top of this labor story and we're going to have some divine inspiration and divine accountability and divine love coming back to us in our money story. You know, we do have some very lovely Venus action right now and Algol uh, just before this moon in June. So some of us may be prospering with unexpected bounty and windfall in the prior time of this moon, but it could also be full, filling out the details in the full moon onward. Um, anything else Saturn supporting from the first house? Well, come on, Saturn is us and we are in our bodies here. We're very like sober, serious, grounded, realistic, practical, determined and persevering because Saturn is in our first house. And he's been there since December of 2000 and full time 20, although he tiptoed in, in the spring of 2020, but we're really owning our Saturnian authority and mastery. And this Saturn is sextiling this full moon in the house of celebrity gay gains from our careers, widespread, widespread influence over groups of people is exciting <laughs> so yes we do have to look at that shala the stinger and what could sting we may have to divest of a group of belonging we may realize that we're not we don't go there anymore that's not our people that's not our thing we just you know have to move away or your larger social groups could sting you in some way you know you're just like it's not your fault you know they're just ouch poised to strike Poised to strike can be good. You know, the scorpion himself, you know, is poised to strike for his survival. So what we, we may be, because the 11th has such a positive house. I'm having a hard time getting that stinger to sound all negative. It is one of the luckiest houses of the Zodiac, right? Along with the fifth and the ninth. And, you know, so could we be poised to strike and be lucky in our striking? Um, you know, poised to strike in the right direction? Because of course, Jupiter is with Mars, the god of directionality. So those are some thoughts for you. I will round it out by saying um, this is your 
this is your story to 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 lose right this is your game to lose really this is going to bring for most of you aquarius is a new level of success in the gains that you're reaping from your career and you know given that the scorpio stinger is in such a positive house i'm not too worried about it i really am not but you know still doesn't mean that someone in your social networks will not sting you maybe they're jealous maybe you're doing really well and they say you're just a vain shallow marketer you astrologer Lori, and you go oh that hurt <laughs> let it go i have two hats guys i'm an astrology geek and i'm really good at online business stuff okay lastly um Pisces sun, moon, and rising sign. You got the beautiful light of this full super moon on the 14th of June shining in your career house. Go back to December uh, 4th for the seed you planted in 21. Go back to the eclipse energy in December of 2022, you know, mid 2021 as well. How were you? Oh, shoot. I might have to correct the record in all of these. That eclipse, that eclipse was in December. Was it in December of 2019? I might have to have an addendum at the beginning of this thing. Let me pause. Yes, it probably was 2019. It was pre-pandemic <laughs> time. It just gets away from me. So I will have to add a correction to the very beginning of this whole thing. Oh, it's going to frustrate the hell out of me. So I'm laughing because I'm going to have to do an insert at the very beginning of this. Okay, back to you, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. Apologize for that phone call. So guess what? You're going to have a big, beautiful, lovely Sagittarius supermoon on the 14th of June sitting in your 10th house of career. And this is your time, as I was starting to say, to get your career into full flourishment. You want to go back to 2019's eclipse, 2019, December 14th, and see what happened then in the six months that followed regarding your career path. You're picking up loose ends here. Now, also, you could look at December 4th. I would say to you that this is often because Saturn's lending support from your 12th house, that you could be receiving a lot of um, career momentum through the way you deal with your inner psyche you know how you get rid of your negative beliefs you know about success about your worth about who you are on a practical note you know 12th house is stripe and payment processors because it can represent third from the 10th the ways that you you generate revenue from your 10th house so like marketing and selling revenues barter and trade revenues <clears throat> so you might find yourself being able to stabilize some of that financial stuff regarding your career in this time frame over the two weeks that follow. But also just think about Saturn here. He's like asking for wisdom. He's asking you to get into your inner sage, your wise woman, your wise man, elderly elder thing is happening in this 12th house. And so what kind of wisdom and sage like mastery and authority are you asking yourself to bring into full light into your 10th house of career, which is owned by Jupiter and Jupiter in your income house with Mars is trying to expand your earnings, expand your money. Jupiter is on you know, salacia, what misinformation or what distortion of facts or truth around the earnings and money story is now being given truth bombs by Jupiter so that you can move Mars forward in the next few weeks financially. Now, Mars is saying, take money action, girl, like her guy. I mean, Mars is like chomping at the bit like a racehorse to try to get you to bring more money to your life. Jupiter is there to say, yes, let's expand your finances, your earnings and your financial growth, your possessions and your prosperity. If you are somebody who needs to spend money now, Mars can help you spend money to make money. Think of it as investing in yourself, not as just wasting money. Jupiter is kind of bonifying Mars, making sure his spending is not too much, just enough. As well, I think that if you have spoken, because this is the house of speech, about your work in a way that hasn't been true, it's been a bit of a distortion of the truth, distortion of the facts, this is a way to clear the record and speak more truthfully or more clearly about the work 10th house that you're doing in the world. Now, with a stinger on the moon in the 10th house, maybe you'll have a sting to your reputation. Maybe, maybe somebody will say something about your work or you that you don't like. It doesn't necessarily have to happen here, but it could. All right. Um, you know, Mercury has been busy uh, digging under the surface, digging up the dirt, so to speak, for a while um, before this moon. And he's digging up stuff to do with your third house um, and your 11th. So what secrets were friends and allies keeping from you or siblings or extended family 
mm, or things that you didn't know that you need to bring to bear or to light in order for you to experience career thrival because mercury is now in the fourth house which which serves as the root for your 10th house of career i would say to you that as well that a full moon in the 10th house can bring popularity and public appeal and if you even with a scorpio stinger maybe it means you're poised to strike to go viral or to be more public or to have some popularity in in the workspace or with the public at large and you have that that trying to neptune on the labors of hercules asteroid and this the labors of hercules <laughs> are in the house of your body what pisces have you gone through like a herculean labor and neptune is there saying and it's been foggy and it's been confusing and it's been difficult and it's been shrouded in in in, in, in uncertainty that is now going to be uh coming to a head or a peak regarding themes of your home life your career and your health maybe Maybe some of that is about some of the things going on in your domestic home life that don't support your health as well. What kinds of things are pulling you away from shining brightly in your career house that you need to have on board? People in your home, are they naysayers? Are they tripping you up? Are they passive aggressively sabotaging you? I don't know. You'll figure it out. Or is the home you're in not the right home and it doesn't allow you to thrive? Um, if you're in a supernatural career, because Neptune is kind of like super woo, spiritual stuff, magic, manifestation, this could also say that you're coming to a pivot point around those themes and how you want them to operate in your career or not, or not, okay? I think that's all I have to say. I feel really bummed out that I kept saying 2020, not 2019, but I cannot do this video all over again. It's like, I know that the eclipses were back before the pandemic and I kept saying 2020. Oh my God, this pandemic has rattled my brain. Check out my description box for everything I have to offer. You might want to become a professional astrologer and learn how to do that with me in my four week kick ass course where I'm going to get you from zero to 100 as fast as I can so that you can actually thrive as a, as a professional astrologer, not something you studied and wanted to do, but then you didn't know how to get started once you got all that learning under your belt and all that time and money you spent as well. All right, hang in there, guys. I'm closing the storyline out. And it is now my time, June the 3rd, June the 2nd, 2022, year of our pandemics ending. And let's not talk about monkeypox. I'll do another video on that. All right, ciao everyone. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications.